Today, we're going to talk about some design predictions that I think will vastly affect the UX design industry in 2024. First thing I feel like we're already seeing a lot of and we'll see a lot more is personalization, specifically contextual personalization. Consumers today, I feel like are more discerning and direct in what they're looking for in their digital experiences. Their preference is leading to things that are more unique and tailored to them. So examples, people are expecting tailored playlists on Spotify. They're expecting recommendations on their Netflix and their Hulu. They're wanting shopping recommendations as they're filling up their cart on the e-commerce website. So personalization just feels more convenient and it feels like a lot less work. If I'm going back to, let's say, blog me into my Netflix every week and every week I'm getting recommended with things, that makes me want to come back. That makes the product sticky and that makes me feel like, okay, they're listening to me. They're curating these things for me. I want to keep coming back to Netflix. Same thing with something like Spotify. Spotify wrapped. I love Spotify wrapped. Every year I get excited like what it's going to be. And they do that because they have your user data. You know, <laughs> they're doing the things with that, but they have your user data and they're using that to curate things that they know that you'll like and want to come back for. Spotify wrapped is huge. And they do that on purpose to kind of keep that cycle of interest, kind of keep that core loop going. So I think we'll see way more personalization and more things that I can even think of right now. Whatever interface, whatever people are interacting with, if you can somehow fold personalization into it, you're going to be ahead of this trend come 2024. Okay, there's also a business aspect to it as well. Companies that invest understanding their users' preferences and building interactions around those preferences can really stand out in a very crowded digital landscape. You think about certain apps that, let's say budgeting apps, there's tons of them out there, but the ones that you can probably tailor to your specific needs is probably the one that you're going to use over the one that's more straight out of the box. What can help tremendously with personalization is AI. Bringing me to the next trend, which obviously is AI, and AI is a huge topic of the moment. And I think in 2024, it's going to get bigger and more ingrained into how we do things in design. We definitely got a big introduction to AI this year. 2024, I'm expecting to see it being more integrated as a tool in every facet. Like I mentioned about personalization, AI can analyze users' data and their action behaviors and provide insights that then we as designers can use to make um, data-driven decisions. So that's one way I see AI being used. Another way I think that's going to be made for AI is automation. AI can be used to automate tasks like customer service, product recommendations. It can also be used as a tool of automating repetitive tasks, whether that's data entry, whether that's compiling user questions. Like I see it as cutting the automation that it can provide as cutting down a lot of the workload and allowing designers to really use more of that time that they're spent, you know, doing kind of the gritty slog of certain things are really not as exciting and putting more of that energy into developing design and solving the problems for the users. I also think AI will be used a lot for improving accessibility in design. For example, for certain people with disabilities, AI can be used for image and object recognition, voice recognition, Adding that layer of AI onto your design to improve accessibility really just helps everybody and really just helps all parties involved. It could create visual information and turn into auditory information. It can really just enhance the overall accessibility for whatever design you're working on. We talked a little bit about accessibility and how we're kind of opening design up for everybody. But another important trend that does just that is responsive design. And this is not even a new trend. This is something that's been around. But I think come 2024, it is bare minimum expectation. Rather than designing a different website or application for different types of devices, so smartphones, desktop, laptop, tablet, Kindles, watches, all these kinds of things, responsive design ensures that whatever web server application you've, cre you've created can adapt and apply to all devices. So when I am watching YouTube on my laptop versus watching it on my TV versus watching it on my phone, I expect not only all these devices to walk and talk together, I am expecting the exact same experience. So when I don't see that, when I come across something that's very different or not there at all, it's pretty jarring and it makes me think like, what the heck? Why have they not got up with the time? So come 2024, bare minimum expectation. Not only is it 
paramount for engaging users across different platforms. It also has a business aspect as well. Search engines prioritize mobile-friendly websites, device-friendly websites in their search rankings. So a responsive UX design positively impacts your SEO. So if you want to be found in search, if you want to cut through the competitive landscape, that is something that's going to be a expectation. So keep in mind an SEO optimized website attracts more traffic, grants a better user experience and has a lower bounce rate. So not only does it look good, it promotes your SEO and it promotes a seamless UX experience on all devices. We talked about responsive design and making sure your website or application looks good. And a trend that I think will aid in that is simplicity and clarity in design. And when I say simplicity, I don't mean boring and I'm not trying to take a <laughs> all the way back to like the 90s were basic like we're not trying to do that it's more about reducing visual clutter and cognitive load as you're looking at websites because i think it's almost a little bit of an overcorrection from past trends where there's so many apps and websites and all kinds of things out there that you want to be loud and bright and bold to stand out but you still kind of get lost in the chaos and the noise if people cannot navigate to your website and accomplish their goal. So that's why I think there was a move towards a little bit of more simplicity. I don't want to say minimalism. I'm not talking all white grays is in. I'm just thinking simplicity of information and layouts and as well as still having visual aspects, but maybe they're more subtle, they're a little bit more 3D, things like that. In an era where attention spans are dwindling, I think the cleaner layouts grab people because they're able to see the pertinent information right away. You're not having to go through the maze or fun house to get to your goal. And I think that's what's really gonna set 2024 apart. Also with the rise of wearable devices and mobile, those things, it's hard to have a crazy design on a screen that's like this big. <laughs> You're wearing like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, anything like that, as well as some mobile. Like we're seeing mobile screen sizes change. So some phones are getting smaller, other getting a bit bigger. All the way, you want to still have your design come across despite the screen, which goes back to what I was saying about responsive design. Now that you know what to expect in 2024, I hope this knowledge can prepare you for some of the trends that you might come across as a designer. I only touched on a few of them. There's so many more out there, but I just focused on what I think was really gonna have the most impact in the industry. And if this video excited you and has not scared you off from the industry, check out this playlist here from Springboard that goes over how to jumpstart your career as a UI UX designer.